So, ladies and gentlemen, on a previous video, I showed you how you could export data from Power BI into Power Automate, but filter it first using Power Automate. You can do it with Power BI filters, but for now, Power Automate. And what we did was basically create a summarized sales table. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to pick up where we left off on the previous video, so the link will be down below in case you haven't followed along. And we're going to create a table with the top 10 sales previous month. So instead of giving them all the information, we're just going to grab their biggest sales previous month. We're going to put it in a pretty table, put it on an email and send it to them. And at the bottom, we're going to create a link that says review all your sales performance here if you're interested. Okay, so that's the game plan for today. I've been wanting to do this for the longest time. These are smart alerts for me. You can do absolutely anything that you want. You can create alerts on anything that you can imagine. And this is so cool. I cannot believe that they are not marketing this more. I just love it. Okay, yep, let's get started. Okay, so let's catch up. Again, I'm going to reuse the flow that we did on the previous video. I'm going to post the link down below, so go and grab it very quickly. So we have every month, we are going to filter the data by the previous year month. So it is 2022 June. So we're going to get the data from May. And then we're going to run a query on Power BI dataset. That looks like this. Let me show you on Power BI. So this is what we did. We had year month, we have the sales and then year week. And instead of giving them all the information, we do want them to use Power BI. We want them to go back to the report and hopefully look around and see if they find any insights. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to tease them a little bit. So instead of giving them all the data, we're going to go here and change year week to date. So we're going to give them top 10 sales previous month. Okay, so these are all the sales that happen on May. And this is the query that we're going to send to Power Automate. So let's go back there. Okay, so let's modify our flow. So we have the top 10 sales. Okay, so instead of year month, we're going to have a date. And we are going to, instead of giving all the dates, we're just going to give them the top 10 of the monthly sales. And we want to sort them by... Um, highest first. So we're going to add order by, order by, and then we put sales, and then we do the sending. Let's test this thing before we move along to make sure that we are getting the correct results so it doesn't get too difficult to troubleshoot later. Flow is good at telling you where the mistake is, so you're fine. Let's see, it ran perfectly. Here's some sample output. If you look at this, it's giving us actually blank sales. And, you know, summarized columns will do that. So we need to get rid of those. In our table, we don't want to have blanks, obviously. It would look horrendous. So we're going to go back here and we're going to add the filter for, you know, filter to remove orders. It's actually easier to create it in Power BI first, but um, this is fairly simple. So let's give the world a blank. So you just basically filter where um, sales is not blank. That's all. We're not doing any, any difficult tax. So done. It ran correctly, and now we need to make sure that we don't have any blanks. Beautiful. It's not sorting here. What I realize is that it, when it exports them to HTML and um, Outlook, it does sort. So it, the sample data doesn't get sorted, basically. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to put the table that was extracted from the Power BI step into an HTML, HTML table. 
so we can you know format it a little bit to send it to um, Outlook. So what we're going to do is go to edit and then you type HTML. HTML table here, data operation, and then you use the first table rows. So now if you your next step is to send it an email, the table is not going to look very pretty. So let me show you. So we go to send email. We need to do this anyway. Send an email to more. You probably have like a sales um, AD group that you can use. I don't, so that's how it's going to look. And then you put your top 10. You can use a row level security, right? So you can filter who sees what. Top 10 um, sales. And then instead of using last, last month, you can actually use the variable previous month, which is quite cool. And here, if you just put the output and run it, you're going to see that the table that gets generated is not very pretty and not very easy to read, to be fair. So let me show you. So here is my email. And you can see that the table is not bad. But I mean, it's obviously better if you format it a little. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go back and we're going to format it a bit. Um, so click done and go back to edit mode and to format these let me show you there is here on you're going to get this link so w3 schools you have css tables and i think this looks quite pretty so you can actually steal the code from them this code our Table is not called customers, it's called table, but otherwise you can steal everything. This part here is the one that does on Hoover, you know, that it changes the color and the alternate rows. Here's the thing, I, either Outlook does not find, does not understand alternate rows or Flow doesn't. The thing is that doesn't work, so don't bother to copy that. It just won't work, just <laughs> giving you the heads up. But uh, to do that, we're going to do a compose. data operation. I'm actually going to copy the code because otherwise it's going to take me forever to change and to do all that stuff. But you see here how it looks and it is an exact copy of what is in here. So you will get that link and you can play with it and change the colors and you know, you can run the changes and see how it looks, which is quite cool. I really recommend you to give, you, give it a go. And then at the end of this, we're going to put the output from the HTML table. Okay, and now here on the email, instead of the output from create HTML table, we're going to get the output from compose. You can see here compose output. Okay, save. And we're going to run a new test. It's actually, it's quite cool. It's faster on my phone than, than it is to actually show here in Power Out. It, it's just crazy. It's so good. So good. Okay, go to my email, I have it there, and then you can see how pretty this thing is. It looks really nice now. Okay, so as you can see, we're almost there. I don't want to have the year, month column. I want to change the column name. I want to change the format of the date. And I want to add text and then a link to Power BI uh, document. So let's do that and then we're ready with this. So first of all, you can change the format of the date either using DAX or you can use it, do it here in Power Automate. I've shown you how to do it in DAX, so let's do it now in Power Automate. So you have options. It's always good to have options. So we're going to change the column name. I have a video dedicated on that. I'm going to post a link down below. Go check it out in case you get lost because it's going to go a little bit fast. So we're going to get first table rows. We are going to get date, and here I'm going to format the date while I grab it. So on the expression, we're going to put that one in there. And it is, let me show you how it looks. Yeah, format date time, okay. 
And now we're going to have sales. So now for the sales column, we already formatted that in DAX, if you remember on the previous video. So I have here the format sales, so I don't need to format them again. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it so I can change the name like that. So now before we finish, we need to actually the HTML table instead of referring to the Power Query step, it needs to refer to the select step. Otherwise, we are not going to get the changes that we just made. So we need to go there. And we have one thing left and is to add some text to our email, right? So you say your top 10 sales on the month were the table. And now you can review all sales data here. And now here is going to be a link. How to create a link. If you think, for example, that your team is always on the run, sales teams at least if they are not internally, they're external, they're always on the run, they probably will review that on their mobile. So wouldn't it be cool if that opens up on the mobile? So there is actually a very good document that talks about all, how you can create links to Power BI reports in different ways. Uh, here, for example, it says that if you want to have a link that specifically opens on the mobile app, what you do is you go to, you get grab this part, and then you need to have, you could be somewhere, and then you need to have the report number. So the report number says whatever is after the report. If you go to your report, this is whatever is after report. So I'm going to grab that, paste it in there, add, and now we test again. And now we're going to open it, and you have the link down below, and it will go to Power BI uh, app and open it there okay so this is all this is all for today um the next video i'm going to show you how to filter using the filters on power bi instead of filtering here in power automate okay i will see you uh, i don't know if maybe tomorrow or next week i don't know how many videos i've done already so see you soon